So, we are looking at uh, uh, friction flow, uh, compressible flow with friction, it is also uh, known as the Fano flow. Uh, and in the previous class, uh, we looked at the thermodynamics of this flow with the help of um, uh, TS diagrams and uh, it is very uh, useful to look at it, uh, because it tells you uh, the entire story. Uh, in this flow, it is an adiabatic flow, therefore, T naught is constant. Okay. And, uh, you have a curve which is of this particular shape uh, qualitatively, uh, where uh, you have two branches and the upper branch is the flow uh, where Mach number is less than 1, it is a subsonic flow, while the lower branch the Mach number is greater than 1 or it is a supersonic flow. And the critical point at which entropy is maximum, S is maximum is uh, the point where Mach number equal to 1. So, uh, the flow proceeds in a duct, if you start from a particular point here 1, then uh, the flow proceeds along the Fano curve and uh, the flow can happen. So, uh, essentially you are varying the length of the duct, so you can have different points on this flow at the exit of the duct. So, this is say uh, point 2. Okay. So, in a subsonic flow, uh, velocity increases, uh, Mach number increases, pressure temperature decrease, entropy uh, increases correspondingly stagnation pressure uh, decreases. But in a supersonic flow, uh, the Mach number uh, decreases, uh, velocity decreases, pressure temperature will increase and uh, stagnation pressure of course, will uh, decrease, because even here the entropy increases. And since it is an adiabatic flow and uh, entropy cannot uh, uh, decrease, there is only one direction in which this flow can occur. You can only start from an initial subsonic flow, continues to be subsonic, at the maximum it can reach Mach number equal to 1. Similarly, if you start with a supersonic flow, uh, then uh, Mach number decreases. Uh, the fan of curve or fan of flow drives it towards Mach number 1 and maximum it can achieve is Mach number equal to 1. So, we have understood this uh, qualitative picture and uh, how variables are interrelated. Now, let us uh, get a little bit more quantitative and uh, get to the flow equations. Uh, towards the uh, end of the lecture, we had uh, come to this uh, particular uh, uh, expression d p plus rho v d v plus uh, rho v square by 2 4 f d x by d equal to 0. Okay. This is the uh, differential equation for a small uh, volume uh, d x in the long pipe okay, for this uh, small volume. Uh, now, uh, what we can do over here is, uh, now we want to express everything in terms of uh, Mach number. So, we will uh, try to do that and for this what we do is divide the entire equation by uh, P. So, it is divided by P and uh, we can use the fact that A square is gamma P by uh, rho. So, we can use that fact. So, here if at this point you multiply and divide by a v, uh, you will get a rho v square uh, by p uh, dv by v, which is this term. Okay. Now, rho v square by p multiply by gamma divide by gamma and gamma p by rho is a square. This turns out to be gamma m square, which is the term over here. So, gamma m square dv by v. So, rho v square is gamma m square uh, rho v square by p. So, gamma m square by 2 4 f dx by d and dp by uh, p. Now, um, we use the fact that rho v is constant okay, uh, and v can be expressed in terms of Mach number. So, rho multiplied by Mach number multiplied by a is constant, while 
rho is p by r t m a is square root of gamma r t. So, you get uh, this particular equation p m by square root of t is a constant is constant from here using a logarithmic uh, differentiation that is you take a logarithm and differentiate you can get t p by p uh, is actually equal to uh, half d t by t minus d m by m. So, which is the expression given here okay. uh, and uh, now there is an expression for d p by p in terms of d m by m and also d t by t occurs here. Can we express d t by t in terms of uh, d m by m only? Uh, this can be done um, because uh, we have the definition of Mach number also that is because there is a term d v by v here. So, d v by v can also be expressed in terms of d t by t uh, because v is Mach number multiplied by uh, speed of sound a, a is goes as square root of t. So, we get d v by b, v is d m by m plus half d t by t. Uh, substituting these quantities and taking the d t by t term common, okay. so that is considered uh, taken common and on the left hand side we take only the term corresponding to friction 4 f dash d x by d uh, and uh, we express uh, all the others now come in terms of Mach number uh, here you have d m square by m square. So, uh, we express uh, the friction term in the left hand side terms relate to Mach number on the right hand side and you have a term d t by t over here. Now, d t by t can be expressed in terms of Mach number only uh, because in this flow t naught is constant, uh, t naught is uh, uh, t multiplied by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square, this is a constant. Uh, now, d t by t uh, again you can take a logarithmic uh, differentiation d t by t can be expressed in terms of d 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square. Okay. Uh, so, uh, there wherever d t by t was there in the previous expression over here and at this particular point, uh, we can substitute uh, this term and uh, we will be getting these values. Uh, and here what we need to do is uh, uh, now this can this is expressed entirely in terms of Mach number. Of course, in this uh, particular formulation the uh, calorically perfect gas assumption is taken. So, uh, we are saying that H is equal to C p t or C p is constant. So, uh, that is why we are able to do all these uh, uh, calculation or all these changes and we can get a closed form solution and to get the closed form solution we have to express this uh, term 1 by gamma m square uh, or all these terms in terms of uh, partial fractions and uh, you can uh, do that do the partial fraction expansion of uh, this particular uh, these particular terms uh, plug them in the main equation. Okay, and if you do that, you get uh, the final momentum equation becomes um, 4 f d x by d uh, is equal to uh, 2 by gamma uh, d m by m cube uh, minus gamma plus 1 by 2 gamma d m square by m square. So, this is d m square by m square and gamma plus 1 by 2 gamma and this is uh, in terms of 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square. So, you have three terms they can be uh, completely in integrated as you go from. So, you have a duct uh, going from length uh, 1 to 2 having a length L. Uh, so, they have to be integrated now from 1 to uh, 2. So, of course, f is a variable here friction factor or friction coefficient. So, for uh, this is friction coefficient for f prime here. Uh, 
the f prime varies very slowly. Uh, so, uh, we can take that the average value of f prime or friction factor any of them both are constant along the length, but we have to take the average value. So, uh, that can be clubbed together. So, that is given the term f bar. So, 4 f bar by d this term is actually a constant okay. and uh, l is multiplied. So, integral from x 1 to x 2 becomes l. Okay. So, 4 f bar l by d is 1 by gamma 1 by m 1 square minus 1 by m 2 square. So, you get this closed form solution that expresses a change in Mach number as you move from an initial entry condition with Mach number m 1. It passes through a duct having a certain uh, coefficient of friction uh, f prime bar. Uh, of length L and at the end it gets uh, Mach number, its Mach number becomes M 2, uh, pressures, temperatures everything undergoes uh, a change. Okay. So, this is the final expression uh, in a closed form solution. So, the, uh, of course, if you look at this expression while you can actually solve uh, uh, if you are given m 1 um, then you can solve and l you can solve for m 2 in principle, uh, but it is not an easy equation to solve. So, uh, iterative tools may be needed, uh, but uh, a different approach is used uh, when actually solving these problems uh, which we will discuss in a moment before we go there. Uh, Let us look at the variables of the flow we are looking for what happens to temperatures T 2 by T 1, P 2 by P 1 uh, all these various things. So, uh, we look at T 2 by T 1 uh, first uh, because the flow is adiabatic T naught 2 is equal to T naught 1. Therefore, you can express T 2 by T 1 in terms of uh, T naught 2 by T naught 1. Okay. So, uh, T 2 by T 1 can be written as T 0 1 by T 1 by T 0 2 by T 2 of course, T 0 2 and T 0 1 are the same and uh, therefore, uh, this is the correct expression 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 1 square by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 2 square. Okay. So, this is T 2 by T 1. What about P 2 by P 1? Uh, here, uh, we cannot use isentropic relations, it is not an isentropic flow, but we know that uh, rho v or rho u uh, is constant and uh, you can express u as uh, m into a and a can be expressed as gamma uh, uh, p by rho and also you can use uh, the uh, equation of state uh, p is equal to rho r t. So, if you use all of them uh, together uh, you get that uh, you get to the fact uh, that p 2 by p 1 is m 1 by m 2 multiplied by a 2 by a 1 m 1 by m 2 multiplied by a 2 by a 1. Now, a 2 by a 1 goes as square root of uh, t 2 by t 1. So, p 2 by p 1 is m 1 by m 2 multiplied by square root of t 2 by t 1 and the expression for t 2 by t 1 we have already found uh, that can be substituted here and you get uh, p 2 by p 1 and rho 2 by rho 1 is now just use the uh, ideal gas equation of state p is equal to rho r t. Okay. So, uh, or uh, rho is equal to p by r t. So, rho 2 by rho 1 will be p 2 by p 1 uh, divided by t 2 by t 1 or multiplied by t 1 by t 2. Okay. So, uh, that gives the expression over here. Now, what about total pressures? Uh, change in total pressure or ratio of total pressures P02 by uh, P01 uh, that can be expressed uh, P02 by P2 divided by P01 by P1 and uh, multiplied by P2 by P1. Locally, at that particular point, uh, the definition of stagnation. Uh, conditions is always through an isentropic process. So, P 0 2 by P 2 uh, is an isentropic 
uh, process that is uh, and P01 by P1 is again an isentropic process. So, those can be expressed in terms of isentropic processes, but P2 by P1 comes from uh, Fano flow equations. So, uh, P02 by P01 can be expressed in ter terms of M1 and M2. Okay. So, uh, now, uh, so in these equations we have expressed every uh, variable Mm, uh, say P2 by P1, T2 by T1, P02 by P01, all in terms of uh, the Mach numbers across uh, the Fano flow through a duct of length n. Okay. So, but uh, what you would realize from all these is even if you know say M1 and you want to find M2, uh, then uh, dealing with these uh, equations uh, is not a straightforward and closed form uh, sort of getting uh, solutions from them is difficult. So, uh, what is done is a simplifying uh, procedure is done uh, uh, that is makes use of the fact that if you consider a Fano flow then there is a critical point which is this particular point star point for the Fano flow. So, this star point uh, uh, the Fano uh, flow that is a flow through the duct uh, drives whether it is in subsonic flow or supersonic flow it always drives towards this particular point where Mach number equal to 1. So, uh, that can be taken as the uh, reference point for a given uh, Fano curve there will be one particular uh, uh, one unique uh, reference point which is the star. So, uh, for uh, that what we uh, do in this is uh, take that reference point as m 1, m 1 is equal to m star equal to 1 and the other point can be the uh, any other point on this uh, Fano curve. So, when you express uh, that um, it becomes uh, t by t star. Okay. So, any any expression say P2 by P1 rho 2 by rho 1, if you take the reference point as the star point, which for a Fano curve there is that unique particular point where Mach number will be equal to 1, uh, then you can express all the parameters in terms of this particular uh, point uh, that is the sonic point here. So, T by T star uh, and P by P star rho by rho star p naught by p naught star. Now, these are functions only of uh, gamma and uh, Mach number. Similarly, if you look at the term 4 f prime l by d, if you take this l such that if you begin from a point it always goes if you take a certain length of duct such that at the end of the duct you get uh, Mach number equal to 1. Then this particular length of the duct is known as the star length L star. So, this is given here L star x is equal to L star. Then uh, in the momentum equation what you get as 4 L star by d that is what we had uh, derived earlier can be written in terms of gamma by and m. Now, these are uh, functions of m only and they are tabulated uh, behind uh, textbooks or there are calculators online which can give you values of uh, these star quantities. Okay. These star quantities uh, when you give an input of uh, Mach number and uh, so now uh, they become uh, charts or tables which we can uh, refer to. So, how will we solve equations? Um, or solve problems uh, when we are uh, doing them uh, actually when we solve them uh, that is usually what would be given is a friction coefficient will be known say length of the duct is known and uh, the initial conditions are given at the start of the duct which is the duct is of length L. Then point 1 and 2 what we know is m 1 p 1 t 1. So, we will know rho 1 and l is given. 
So, the uh, way to go about solving this problem is if you view this in a T s diagram it will be very useful. So, it will be of this kind. Um, so, this is the maximum entropy point. So, you start with the point 1. Now, this is a unique reference point. So, this reference point L star is unique. So, if I take for point 1 this is L 1 star okay. and as a, it flows through a duct of length L it reaches point 2. For point 2 the L star is uh, over here this is L, L 2 star. So, what is L? So, L is actually because we are taking f, f prime that is uh, 4 f prime or f uh, prime that is a constant that is the average friction. Uh, so, uh, 4 f L by D can be written as 4 f L star L 1 star by D minus 4 f L 2 star by D. Okay. So, uh, with this equation basically, so L is equal to L 1 star minus L 2 star. So, with this particular equation you can connect uh, to uh, the 2 L stars or the 4 F L star by D uh, this particular expression and this will be tabulated and from there we can extract. So, if you know this particular value uh, which is known because m 1 is known since L is known this value is known therefore, you can find out 4 f L star by D for the point 2. Once you know that you can back calculate or you look at the charts and get what is m 2. Once m 2 and m 1 are known then it is easy to find all the remaining uh, quantities. So, that is how the problems are solved and uh, we look at uh, problem solution very soon. Uh, before we look at that uh, in the next class we look at an important concept uh, which is known as choking due to friction. So, we had seen uh, choking mass flow choking due to uh, changes in uh, area varying area. Now, uh, here if you look at uh, frictional flows also uh, there is a uh, choking involved and we will look at that in the next class.